Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to model design strips for a complex lab example in RAM concept. In this particular video, we're going to be taking a closer look at the trimming in the design spans that are running through our drop cap or shear cap in both the latitude and longitude direction. Now a shear cap is a thickened slab area over a column that does not comply with the dimensional requirements for a drop panel. Drop caps or shear caps may be used for punching shear calculations, but should be ignored in flexural and one-way shear calculations. Now before we get started and take a look at our default configuration for our design spans, let's also remind ourselves about our typical slab thickness. The typical slab thickness in the sample model that we're using today is 12 inches thick and the drop cap extends 6 inches below the bottom of the slab. Now that we've reviewed our geometry, let's go ahead and use our selection tool and take a look at the design spans in the latitude direction that are currently running through the drop cap. Here, if I were to select the column strip tab, I would notice that the default cross-sectional trimming was set to none. Now, this is appropriate for the majority of our slab system, but in the area of our drop cap, we're gonna pay special attention to this particular parameter. Now, before we modify the design spans in our sample model at the drop cap area, let's review single cross-sectional trimming in RAM concept. So single cross-sectional trimming considers one cross-section at a time and modifies the cross-section based on the user's specified trimming type. As just mentioned, the single cross-sectional trimming in our model in the area of our drop caps is currently set to none. If I were to take a look at the figures on this slide, I'm going to go ahead and select a cross-sectional trimming that might be more appropriate for the drop cap area. And specifically, what I'm looking for is for the bottom of the drop cap to be chopped off. Considering that information, for this particular example, I'm going to go with max rectangle. In addition to understanding your single cross-sectional trimming and ramp concept, it's also important to understand the shear core. So ramp concept defines the shear core as the parts of the trimmed cross-section that include any vertical slices that extend from the top of the cross-section to the bottom of the cross-section. The one-way shear design calculations are based on the total shear force in the strip and the shear core. The nominal shear strength provided by the concrete will then be calculated using only the area of the shear core. The rest of the cross-section will be ignored for shear resistance. Now if you weren't sure quite how the trimming has taken place in your particular model, you can go ahead and perform the calculation and I'm going to show you a few key areas that you might want to take a look at. And we'll do this before making any changes so we can see how our changes will affect those things. The first thing is, how do we review our shear core information? Well, RAM concept does provide perspective plans where the shear core will be shaded in darker than the rest of the cross section. To access those plans, you can go to the layers menu bar item, select design strip, and you can go to either the latitude or longitude cross-sectional perspective plan. Now these plans are only available once you perform a preliminary calculation. So if I were to take a look at the area within my drop cap or shear cap, I would notice that the top of the slab to the bottom of the slab, including the thickened area of the drop cap, was considered in the shear core. Now for this particular example, that's not quite appropriate as I cannot classify this area as a drop panel and I don't want it included in the one-way shear calculations. In addition to that, I can also use my cross-sectional auditor, which is available in my design spans plan. So here I'm gonna to go to the design spans plan that I'm interested in. 
go to your layer specific tool and we can click on the audit cross section. Now here I'm going to go ahead and make sure I'm clicking on a cross section that's basically going to be the first one within this drop cap. Now what the auditor will do for you is it'll go ahead and give you a lot of information about how the design was performed on your slab system. But in addition to that, you can also take a look at your cross-sectional configuration. Now again, I mentioned that the thickness of the drop cap is 18 inches. So I can very clearly see from the auditor that the entire thickness of the slab, including the thickened drop cap, was considered in the flexural calculations. So let's go ahead and close out of that. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and make my changes. So I'm going to select my design spans that I'm interested in that are running through my drop cap, right click and say selection properties. Then in the column strip tab, I'm going to change the cross-sectional trimming to max rectangle, and then I'll go ahead and click OK. I'm going to repeat that process in the longitude direction. Once I'm done making my changes, I can go ahead and review the results by performing another preliminary calculation. Once we do that, we can return to our cross-sectional perspective plan, and we should be able to see that the cross-section that is running through the drop caps has a cons consistent top and bottom elevation, and we know that the thickened portion of the slab is now no longer being considered in the shear core. In addition to that, if I want to return to one of my latitude design spans plan, I can use my auditor again to verify the thickness of the slab. Here I can see that the thickness of the slab is 12 inches, which is the thickness of my main slab. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.